This video is going to show you how to use a new service on Hub. We've now got access to Adobe Spark. Adobe Spark is an integrated suite of media creation applications for both mobile and web. So we'll start by clicking on the waffle menu and choose Adobe Spark. So we're on the start page here. The video today I'm going to show you how to make a video using Adobe Spark. You can see I've already started a recent project, but we're going to go there to create a project. I'm going to choose video. You can see we can make flyers, web pages. We can also do branded graphics and other customized graphics as well. But as I said today, we're going to make a video using this. So first we'll give our project a title, so I'm going to go with Smiling. I'm going to click on Next. Now it gives you options so you don't have to start from scratch, but personally I prefer to start from scratch. But there are ways of helping you to make your videos. So when you start it up for the first time, you'll be given a quick start video. If you don't want to watch that, um, you can click on the next. But I'm going to go on here, add, and so you can see I can add a range of different things. I can add video, I can add text, I can add images. So we're going to add some images to this today. So we'll click on the photos. And we've got a choice of options that we can connect to. We'll be doing one soon about how to do the Google Drive version. We'll go to Upload Photos, and I'm going to just go into my downloads here and go in this little file. I've got photos and videos. I'm going to add a couple of pictures that I've taken. So you select the picture that you want. I'm just going to have a quick look through. When I'm happy with the photo I want, I double click on it and it uploads it. Now I can also add text to this. So this is my work in my back garden that I'm doing. So I can type in my text there. So I'm working on a patio. So when I'm happy with that, I can now drag and drop the text all around the image. So I can pull it down to the corner and you can see it changes where the position of the bottom line is closer to the edges as you pull it around. So I'm just going to leave it there. I can also take the text size down or increase it and obviously delete it there. So I can keep on adding more slides to this. So I'll continue now and add the rest of my photos. So I'm going to add now a photo that was in portrait settings. So you can see I just need to change the angle of it. Okay, and that's changed it now. And what I can do with this photo, I can edit it on the screen so I can close up in it, so I can bring it closer, so I can get rid of those edges. I can pull the image up and down so I can focus on something in particular. Now I can add an icon to this. So on here, I can find an icon. I'll type in spade. There you go. I'm going to go find a spade there. I'll leave that in there. So I've added another slide in there. I'll keep on adding my photos. You can also search for photos online, but I'm going to continue with uploading my photos. My final one, my finished patio. Type in my text. Now, 
I can add more slides in. I'm going to put another photo in that I actually intended on putting in earlier. So again, I'll go into that upload photo, find the photo I'm after. There it is. As you can probably tell, this is a photo that came much earlier. So what I can do, I can come down to the bottom here, grab that slide and drag it over. There we go, I can put it in its space there. So I'm happy now with all this. If I add another slide by accident, I can click on the three dots and delete it there. Obviously, if you want a slide duplicated, you can also do it from that option. Now, at the end, it gives you a credit section, very important for our DCF skills. So I put in Mr. Blizz. It also adds any credits from any images that you've used online. So here's a preview of what mine looks like. It will play some music in the background. There we go, I'm very happy with that. I can also change the layout of this. So there are four options on here. I've got it on full screen right now. We can also change it to split screen so that it includes both the photo and the image on separate um, parts. You can also put it as a caption at the bottom, or the caption can be put anywhere, or change it to title and text so we can add lots more information about it. We can also change the theme, so this changes the font, the colour schemes on it. I'll change mine. You see there's a lot of options on here. We can also change the aspect ratio of it and we can add music to go along with it too. So there's a lot of Creative Commons music used here so there'll be no problem with copyright. So I'll change my music. You can also preview the music to listen to it, see what it sounds like. Now once you're done, we can again preview it to listen to the music that you've added to it. As you can see, because I chose a different theme, it's changed the way the slides transition. Once I'm happy with that, I can share this, I can publish it or invite people. So if I invite somebody, I can collaborate with another person on here. So it will only work with other people on Hub. So you could collaborate with other class members or if you're a teacher, you can collaborate with other colleagues. We can also publish it too. So we can create link. I will just make this video a bit shorter now. So I've just shortened the length of time that that takes. And now we have a link that we can share that um, children can put on their Seesaw account or post to their Google Classroom wall. We can email it to, or they can download it and then upload it onto their Google Drive or OneDrive on Hub. So there's how to use Adobe Sparks to make a video using still images. It is possible to add your own videos to it. At the moment, I'm just working a couple of bugs out of it as it's not letting me upload .mov videos. But what I will show you now is how to do it on an iPad. So there are three apps to download, Adobe Spark Post, Adobe Spark Page, and Adobe Spark Video. Now I'm going to show you Spark Video so you can see my app there, I've selected it. As always, it will ask me to sign in and asks for permissions. So I'll click on the login at the bottom and then I'll sign in using my hub login there and it will direct us to the normal Microsoft login page.
So don't worry if this page appears, it quickly redirects and then signs you in. So you can see it comes up with the normal startup videos. Now you can access the things that you were already doing online. Everything's saved on the cloud. So I'm going to go back into my smiling one. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to add a new slide into this one now. So I'll go here, I'll press the plus at the bottom left, and you can see I've added something new. And then I can click on the add here, and I'll let it access my photos. So I'm going to choose from the choice at the top, I'm going to add a video. So I'll go into my recent section here. So I'll select my video then. And then I can choose how much of the clip I want to use. So I don't want people to see the um, dirty section of my garden that I'm still working on there. There you go. And if I press the plus in the middle, I can add some text and explain what's going on here. So I'll press done once I'm happy with that. And again, I can press on it and reposition it all over my screen. Now, when I click on here, I can see all the different options that we had as well. So I can change the theme, I can change the size of the video, and I can also add music to it. And again, we can now save it. We can save it to camera roll, which I'm going to do. And now that's ready to be uploaded onto Classroom or onto my Google Drive or OneDrive. And I can also then copy a link to the clipboard and choose different ways to share it. I hope that's been helpful to everyone. There'll be more videos on the Adobe Spark suite very soon.